All right, as we started out this morning, putting our fascia board here on the back side, and then up the sides. So we look pretty good. As I showed you before, wherever we have a joint in a fascia board, I cut blocks, the pitch of the roof, just to beef this up so I can get uh, better contact with my fascia boards to my truss. So now we have that, we wanna straighten all the tails of the trusses. So we got our string line up and we got a few we gotta move and that should take care of everything. And we can run all of our sheathing up here. Now we're running half inch OSB on this roof. And I know people are gonna ask, why didn't you use um, weather logic or you know some some type of material like that? And it's it's just cost. You guys, that's like double the cost. Um, I understand it's a it, at the end of the day it's a better product, but it costs more, and that does not fit into everybody's budget. And if you are super worried about it, if you're um, building your own house, you can have a really good roofing system with OSB. I wouldn't. I'm not. I would not be worried at all to do that to my house. Cover it with synthetic paper. That's what we're doing here, and this will last just as long. So we're gonna get this straightened, squared, and start sheeting. All right, we got to go quite a bit on this. Three eighths, probably. More? Yep. More, if you can. That's quick. So you can see this is pretty straight now. And when we put our plywood on, we'll make sure that all of our two by sixes in between are good to go. But they actually look, look pretty good. So I'll get you down here and show you what we actually do. See, we have a toe strap around the bottom. And then it angles up to the truss and then it just pulls it whichever way we want. All right, we are at the point where we're gonna sheet this roof. We have our fascia on the west side here, which we're gonna work on all straightened. We got the whole side of the roof squared and so we're ready to go. So we're gonna get our first uh, couple sheets up to lock it down. And then once we do that, we'll get our harnesses hooked up to the top and then we're just gonna work on Sheeting, hopefully it goes pretty smoothly. It is super, super muddy over here, um, but we got in here and I think we're gonna be able to get it done. This, uh, this, I want to make sure that we make sure this is straight when we nail it in. Um, this one looks like we got to go a little, I'll have you look under there to see if it lines up or if I'm going through. Am I going into the wood? Yep. Thank you. 
Well, as you all know, Mr. Post Frame is really concerned about safety. So, let me get this harness on. legs. There's my back right there. I undid the wrong clip. There we go. I feel like my deer harness might be easier. I've got a lot of adjustment to do, Justin. This is built for a, a giant. This is the quick safety brand. It might be safe, but I don't know if it's quick. break time by the time we get all set up here. <laughs> Ready?
So before we started setting any valley trusses, I found the center of the roof. So I measured off both sides, found the center at the bottom of the roof and at the top. And then I snapped a chalk line and then marked each of the valley sets right in the center. That way when I am up there moving them back and forth, trying to get them into the place, I, all I have to do is line up that mark on the center of the truss and my chalk line. And then I know all the peaks will be perfectly in line. All right, we have all of the roof, roof sheathing, whatever you want to call it, on, except for where it changes from 512 to 312 on the other side. So blowing all this off, and we're going to put our synthetic paper down to try to protect it from any moisture over the next few days before we get our steel on. So the roofing paper that I choose to use is, is, is a synthetic that's uh, rated for steel. Um, I like it. It's got like a, it's got pretty good traction on it. It's really tough. You can leave it out for a while and it won't just rip off um, like, you know, 30 pound felt will. So I like using that. It's got all the marks on it for overlapping it. Um, so it makes it real easy. All right, good morning guys. It's Monday, it's about the only nice day we have this week. We're gonna try to get um, our valley trusses set up on the roof before we frame up our post and beam just so we can get the plywood up there, get the trusses up there easier. And then uh, right now we're getting set up for the first valley set. This sits right at the edge. And once I get up there, I'll kind of show you guys how this will work as I do it. All right. Take it down to that mark down there, Jake. Should be your way quite a bit. Yep, got it. Right about there. Back. Yep. Right there? Yep. You good? Yeah. You guys can probably figure out what I thought about at night last night, putting these trusses up. <laughs> That's what I dreamed about. <laughs> like it or not. I don't know. <laughs> probably a little bit of both. All right, so that's gotta sit right at that edge of the plywood. Grab our two by four. Set it right up against it. Measure from your end how far down you are. We'll split the difference. So 12, 14, should be about seven and three eighths. I'm seven and a half. I'm at seven and a quarter. All right, come my way an eighth. 
Should be about three eighths right there. All right. Grab the nail gun. Can you hand me that level, Justin? I mean, we'll level this up when we put our rest of our things on, but. Should be sitting there. So we're pretty close already, so we're all right. Good? Yep. Just go across and nail it every like six, eight inches. Do the other side and then we can march. Every two feet again on these. All right, so the way I do my valley sets is I'll take the one that sits closest to the edge of the sidewall or end wall, whatever the case may be. I'll get that set in place. I usually run a two by four behind it, fasten that down to the plywood. And if I can hit trusses or purlins, I'll do that. And then I'll nail uh, the truss into that. Then what I do is I work back. I will take in consideration what the plans say, how many feet back. But in all reality, what I do is I take a two by four, mount it to the truss, run it back, level, and then I move the next one, keeping a level at the top until the peaks are perfectly level. There's just so many variables in these buildings that you could be off a little bit. Um, so that's the way I find the most efficient to do it. And it works out good for me. So I just work my way back all the way up to the, the last one. And that's, that's basically how I do it when I put in valley sets.
All right, we have this all sheathed except right there. We're just gonna drape some paper over it. We're supposed to have rain for the next three days. Got this all plywooded up to here. And right here, we sheathed it all the way up to the peak because we're gonna have lots of trims that come together here. And it's very important that we get this uh, peak good and waterproof. So right now we're gonna cut this, kind of peel this back so we can get our underlayment underneath so it all overlaps, flows downhill. Hopefully we can get that done before the rain gets here in a few minutes. Alright guys, so that's that's basically going to be a wrap for the roof sheathing and the valley sets. Um, I know that there's going to be questions about zip sheathing, weather logic, why didn't we use those, and it really comes down to budget. Uh, those are superior uh, products, um, but you can have good results using OSB or you know half inch uh, four ply uh, plywood. Um, in the case here, it's it's really a budget issue at forty something dollars a sheet, and then you know you go up to one of those others at seventy five to hundred depending on where you are. It's just it adds so much cost, and you can still get good results. That's why we did this. Um, this is going to turn out great. We got the synthetic paper over it, and we're going to run steel down it. I know somebody's probably going to ask about why didn't we use H clips? In some parts of the country, you're required. Some parts you're not. Being that we're putting uh, steel on this. I didn't want to use H clips uh, because anything that sticks above that plywood will and can show through uh, the steel when you screw it down. All that steel is going to get screwed and it's going to suck that plywood up and everything tight and it's going to end up being really nice. One last thing before I go, we started a Patreon. It's a build group. We're covering different topics every month. Uh, we're taking questions prior uh, to the show. Um, if you haven't, um, go check that out. You can go to pay the Patreon link off of YouTube, search Mr. Postframe, uh, sign up. There's going to be lots of good information. You can get your questions answered. There's a lot more information on there. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next show.